we're at the very head of the finishing straight here with the cars massing behind us here and at the very pinnacle of it all we've got this lovely mg pa airline and the owner standing next to me is mike long hi mike oh yeah you come far today from the isle of white good journey excellent okay i mean this is a lovely car to come that sort of distance i mean it's a fair old distance from the isle of wight is it used to traveling that sort of distance um it's been the second time it's been here this year and it went up to the um triple m register uh gathering last year at um slough all right so that's another little trip from yeah. the isle of wight isn't it about sort of 80 miles yeah. altogether no. right should we have a look at your car yes let's have a walk around so absolutely beautiful colour. What are what are the colours on it? It's Oxford blue and Cambridge blue, which are the original colours. I was going to say, yeah, this is an original paint yep. scheme. Yeah, it is. Obviously being redone at some point. It was the um, I bought it from uh, the chap who him and his father had owned it since 1962. Yeah. And they started a restoration in the late 60s and eventually got it back on the road in 2011. Fantastic. And, and when did you buy it? 2019. So a little bit after that, so they, they were using it for a bit. No, it had been barely used. It's really? had any, it was a handful of miles on the clock yeah. from the MOT in 2011. What sort of mileage has it got then? It's it's reading about um, 60,000, which really? may or may not be genuine. Yeah. It could have had a change of speed at some point, I guess. It <laughs> might have done, but I doubt bit, it, because like it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a bit... Um, it didn't it didn't work very well when i first had it it kept sticking but um it seems to have freed itself up right okay excellent okay what well, can you tell us any more on the history of the car um it was originally bought it's not far away from here actually and um it's been in surrey it's spent in, uh, sorry most of its life it went to a market gardener in mitcham okay um one of a, they were the biggest growers of watercress in the country in the 1930s um, he eventually emigrated to Australia after the war. I don't know exactly what, how long he kept it because the earliest log book that I've got is dates from 1947, stamped, duplicate book, uh, new book issued, original retained, and I think that was because of the need for petrol rationing stamps yes. on the book. I think yeah. many um, old books were retained at that time and right. new one issued, but I've got a full history of ownership since then. So they've got all the paperwork to go with it. Yes. Which is always yeah. out of the provenance of yes. these sort yeah. of age vehicles, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, what sort of market would this have been named at? Well, young, young people in the day? It's a bit of a moot point, actually, because they only made 42 of them. Okay, which so shows pretty, pretty that rare, they, isn't they, it? they weren't particularly popular. And I no. think there's a couple of schools of thought. One is that um, they were very cramped um, inside, and MG owners, buyers, tended to want open air motoring they didn't right. want to be closed in close and the other open. theory is that um it's a very small compact car and they were quite expensive relatively and for the same money you could get a much better car a bigger car yeah. um as well finished as those so right. they were sort of in a bit of a difficult market i think so only 42 made yeah does it have any sporting credentials was that the, well they raced at all? um the previous owner's father when he bought it he was told that it had raced at Brooklands before the okay. war yeah um, he did spend a day here going through the archives but didn't come up with anything all oh, right I uh, couldn't so, find it no we don't know well, um, mm. my um, plan is at some point in the future I might come back and try and wade through the archives but um, it's a case of finding anything. time yeah yeah yeah, there may be something in there, you know. Yeah, know. I mean, it's the, the owner at Mitcham's not, not a million miles from here anyway, no. is it? No, that's right. It's well, just up the road, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's have a walk down the side, and then we'll have a look inside. You're talking about it being quite a, a cramped cockpit. Yeah. So, should we have a, a quick look there? It's relatively easy to... I'm not very tall. I can get in okay. Getting out was a bit more of a problem. Right. <laughs> It is very low, isn't it? It is, yeah. Very low and, and quite a high dash as well. Yes. And a smallish windscreen. Yeah. Is, is that and a big, and a big windscreen? Through? No, the seeing is, is quite good. It's the, it's the getting out which is the main problem yeah, with it. Yeah, but that big wheel is yeah. sort of locks you in underneath, yeah. doesn't it? In there. Wow. When, when I first had it, I, I was having tremendous difficulty getting out and I actually had to consciously um, work out how I was getting in there and yeah. try and do it in yeah. reverse to get out again. <laughs> Goodness me, it does look a bit tight, as you say. 
a little bit of room in the back for your suitcases. Yeah, the uh, the advertising literature referred to uh, be able to get your golf clubs in there. Really? But well, I've oh, seen a modern golfer. A very small set of golf clubs. It would have been. I've seen the people that play golf today. They um, they never get the clubs in there. No, definitely not. So a two-seater um, sporty coupe yeah. with a little bit of space for golf clubs. Yes, if you're lucky. According to MG, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, they did the same advertising thing with the MGF. They, with that, they said you mm. can get two sets of golf clubs right. in the back. Right. Same sort of marketing, but, you know, 60-odd yeah. years later yeah. or more. Yeah. Amazing. The suitcase, really, is just to cover up the, the junk that I carry around in there because there's no boot as such. Right. Uh, what's, what's the gearbox? How many gears we got here? It's four forward and reverse. Four forward and yeah. one reverse. It's a crash box. No overdrives or anything no, like that? Reverse, no, reverse gate. They're the opposite way around to a modern gate. Oh, right, gate. OK. Can be confusing when you... I can say anything yeah. with that. Can be. Yeah, it looks quite tight for your feet in it there. It is. I'd imagine that gets fairly hot in there as well. It does get quite warm, yes. Yeah. We've got but, ventilation but it's got the opening, the, um, windscreen. opening windscreen. It's got the opening roof. And, and the it's sunroof got the slide, is yeah. natty as well, isn't it? Yeah. So that's... A fullish sunroof, sunroof slides yeah, back. Yeah, slides right back. Yes. It's actually and it's locked at the moment. I like the three windows across the top. That's quite a nice sort of design touch on there, I think. Yeah. So you get a bit of air. You can, yeah, through, yeah. When windscreen it's open, it's um, it's just the feet that get a bit warm. Yeah, yeah. Because the whole thing gets quite warm actually. At um, on a long run, it it warms up quite nicely. Yeah, I can imagine it would do. They could have missed a trick there. They could have done octagon windows, couldn't they? They've done, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it looks good. It, it makes it sound, you know, it's a different sort of design on mm. there. Pretty much of the period, I guess, really. Yeah, I think it was. So yeah. we've got the indicators that pop out here. Yes, and they work. Yeah. In conjunction with flashing indicators. I was going to say, have you got flashes on Yeah, they're as well? concealed in the um, tail lights and the, and the side lights. Oh, yes, right. We've got them at the back, yeah. Here. So that's a later edition, presumably. That was done by the yeah. chap that restored it previously, only when he right. restored it. And we have the spare wheel in a nice little, yeah. um, little area on the back here. And an additional brake light because no, oh, nobody, nobody looks down there for no, brake lights right anymore. The bottom, yeah, yeah, right down here, aren't they? It's very low. It's only done with rubber when, sucker, when so it can be removed. When you're SUV following up yeah. about here somewhere, yeah. it's a little bit difficult it to is, see. Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Can we have a look inside the engine, perhaps, yeah. there? I know these cars are always a little bit uh, interesting to open up with the leather straps. There we are. Okay, just run us through some details on the engine. Well, it's an 850cc engine, um, overhead camshaft, inlet ports and outlet ports opposite sides, cross flow head. Uh, okay. Camshaft driven by a vertical, through a vertical dynamo at the front. Right. It's uh, derived from an old Morris Minor engine. Ah, okay. So it's all within the the, the Morris Garages yes, yeah. group. Yeah. It's quite highly modified, I think, from the Morris Minor version. And that gives you what sort of horsepower out of that? It's eight, uh, nominally eight horsepower, nominally it's a thirty-six bhp. I think it's rated 36. at. It's not the fastest thing on four wheels by any means. No, well, these days. <laughs> yeah. Even the slightest gradient, you might as well it's change down. You might as well change down before you get there before because it's not going to go up to the top. Yeah. 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 Lovely, but yeah. it's it's a pleasure to drive. It's it's totally different to driving a modern car, and it's really enjoyable. That's great. Is it your only MG, or do you have a garage full? No, I only got one. I've been through three. I had a YB um, back in the 19. 70s early 70s yeah. it was my first proper car yeah um i bought another one in ooh, 2009 which i kept for nine years um sold it and bought a va saloon right which proved to be a bit of a disaster so i sold that saw this advertised and really on impulse i thought i want it i'm going to buy it okay couldn't afford it made a silly offer on it and um it was accepted they accepted it yeah wow but you were lucky there. I was. It's certainly yeah. a, a very fine looking, very rare car. Yeah. 
and we've seen it down at Brooklands a couple of times now. Yeah. Hopefully, we're going to see it a few more. Maybe next year, yes. Yeah. yeah. Last time this year, then. Yeah. Probably. It's it's a nice trip actually from the island. It's it's a fairly easy either from Southampton or Portsmouth. It's not a bad run. Hmm. So it stretches its legs a bit. It does, yeah. Yeah. And it's used. I, I prefer to go somewhere for a purpose rather than just drive it round for an hour and take it home and put it back yeah. again. Yeah. Know what you mean. Fantastic. Credit to you. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mike, for showing us around your, your car.